All right, welcome back YouTube. I'm gonna do a slight adjustment here. It's not gonna work, all right. Okay. It's a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Hopefully this helps somebody out there who's doing a similar project. I know uh, Blitzkrieg Germans is a fairly popular wargaming subject. I use Blitzkrieg really loosely because the Germans never really use that war, that word, that term. We, as modern people in the Western world, use that term to denote the German army in its early victorious stages. So Poland, France, Low Countries, and then the first, the first uh, part of the Russian campaign up into the fall and winter of '41, into the counteroffensive in the winter. So these are early war German guys. Now, I primarily had these guys uh, built around Barbarossa, at least all of their vehicles are, but I've done the uniforms more suitable to the French campaign. Because I want to be able to use them for the French campaign, I'll never game the Polish campaign, I can tell you that right now. It just, it, I have zero interest in it. The, the Wehrmacht, it just, no, no. But the French campaign interests me a lot, and then obviously Barbarossa interests me a lot. So I got these guys built around here, and what we have is four different manufacturers. Um, five different figures here. These are all riflemen. I chose uh, individually based riflemen here, minus the guy on the left, because I don't have any rifle metal riflemen from Warlords. But... Uh, these are all figures that are suitable for early war Germans. And what does that mean? For some of you that don't know, uh, the low boots. The low b black and brown boots, depending on if the soldier died them or not. Um, those weren't introduced until 1942-43. They really weren't seen until 43. Um, so, you know, that look with the gaiter, with the small ankle gaiter and the low ankle boots, uh, those would not have been present in 1940 and 41. Also, uh, German uniforms were different. Uh, they had the M37 trousers, and the German stuff's pretty easy to follow because they do use a year naming convention. Um, so the tunics got simpler over the years. Uh, starting the campaign, they had M36 tunics, which are the famous ones with the bottled green collar on there. Now, you could find pictures in 1945 of guys wearing tunics that have that bottle green uh, collar on it. In addition to that, some guys with the later style tunics would have a tailor or themselves add that bottle green tunic. So it is, I have seen actual historical M40s or M42 tunics that had that bottle green tunic because some guys who are veterans, they liked that look and they, and they wanted that, so they did it. And the German army weren't that big sticklers about it regulations. But N36 tunics were worn and seen throughout the entire period of the war. But they're most associated with the uh, French and Polish campaigns. So I, I'm doing half my force uh, with those uh, bottled green tunics and the other half without. And then the other thing that distincts, that's very distinct to the early war German guy is the, uh, the stone gray trousers. And those are the M37 trousers. Um, they went to the M40 pattern and the M42. They kept getting more simpler, uh, but it was a, uh, a, a, a mid-tone gray, very distinct from the filled green gray of the tunics. And once again, I chose to do half my force with those trousers. You would see those trousers primarily in the early period, but it would not be uncommon to see them in Barbarossa too. So... Um, starting with your left here, we got a Warlord Metal, Warlord Plastic, Artisan Metal, uh, Crusader Metal, and Black Tree Design. Whoop, my hand's covering everything. Black Tree Design. Crusader, Artisan, Warlord, Warlord Metal. So um, I got the Warlord guys on a little MDF, 3mm MDF base, because um, all of the other guys are based on uh, Games Workshop raised plastic bases, and then they also have the, uh, you know, their metal miniatures, so they have the metal, the metal deal on top of that.
So, it, and, and this guy's metal, so he also has that, so it might be worth um, having him, even though his base is uh, a little flatter, raised like that. So I'm gonna go through, and I just wanna, I'm gonna raise the camera here, and I just wanna show you guys some size comparisons. So this is the Black Tree Design and the Warlord Plastics. You can tell right there, size comparison wise, try and line up their feet. Now this guy's like at a quarter squat, the Warlord guy with glasses. So take that into consideration. Um, but as far as proportions and height, I think they actually match up very well. 100% can use these guys in the same unit. Now, I do believe the Black Tree design is a superior miniature. Matter of fact, they were my favorite of all of the early War German stuff I have. Next up's the Crusader, and these guys are my second favorite. These guys are going to be chonkier. You can slightly tell. They still fit in nicely. Height-wise, they're probably also okay. Maybe a little taller. Right there. But, and a little chonkier. But I think you could still get away with using them in the same unit. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves, though. Um, the the Crusaders definitely are more okay with the uh, the Black Tree design guys, and I'm using the Plastic Warlord as a control because that is the most plentiful model on the market. Now this is where we start to run into some issues. You tell here he's quite a bit taller and he's chunkier. So the Artisan guys are actually the chunkiest and the tallest out of any of the ranges. Here's next to the Crusader. Now with the Crusader, it's it's not as noticeable. He still is a little bit taller, equal chunkiness to the Crusader. Uh, but yeah, definitely. You so you could you could mix the Crusader and Artisans, uh, but I don't think you can mix the Plastic Warlords and the Artisans. They're just not gonna they're just not gonna hunt. Uh, and then you got Warlord Metal and Warlord Plastic. And obviously they match very well. Um, they are a little taller, I believe. Now this guy, like I said, he's at a quarter, a quarter squat. Unfortunately, all of the poses from the plastic kit are really weird. They're like in a dead run. They're squatting. They're kneeling. They're prone. They're all doing a bunch of weird shit. Um, so there's no really guys with like a really upright posture. So that's the best I could give you guys here. Uh, but yeah, um, it, honest opinions on after now painting over a hundred of these guys. We'll shift back down here. Uh, honest opinion, uh, you know, I mean, the Black Tree stuff is really cool. The sculptor was really good. They have some wonky some wonky poses. Um, the one I'm showing you is an awesome pose. Uh, but yeah, a little weird in the posing on some of the miniatures. But the uh, the sculpting quality and detail, attention to detail is superb. Um, the Crusader, the I like the Crusaders, but for example, the rifles, they don't look like K98s. They just look like generic bolt action rifles. And that's the same with the Artisan guys. Um, but the artisan guys, number one, a lot of the faces from their, uh, you know, earlier mid-war German pack, the guys with the, the jack boots, the, the face details trash. I'd say three or four out of the ten that you get in a squad pack were, were really lackluster. Um, they're the largest by far, so they don't mix well, and they're expensive. They're also, I think, the most expensive. So they got that going against them as well. Um, the Plastic Warlord kits are fine kits as far as the Plastic Warlord kits are concerned. I rate them among the top of the plastic kits that they produce for their World War II stuff. 
Uh, the metals are decent as well, uh, decent metal miniatures that are meant to fit in with their plastic counterparts. Um, the only manufacturer that I really want to have here that isn't present is Gaddis Gaming. So I will be purchasing probably a couple, I'll probably purchase at least one heavy machine gun team and then a 10-man uh, squad pack from them just to try it out um, and see how they go. So there might be an update to this video, I don't know. But right now, out of these four manufacturers, this is what you got. And other than Gaddis Gaming, I don't know of anybody else that makes regular Wehrmacht early war troops. I just do not know of anybody. I know they. I know there's some companies that make earlier Waffen SS, you know, Gerbring Jagers, Falsham Jagers, all that stuff. But early war here infantry type guys. You know, I'm not aware of anybody outside of Crusader, Artisan, Black Tree Designs, Warlord, and Gaddis. And like I said, Gaddis is the only ones that aren't represented here. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, especially to you guys that are wanting to do early war Germans. Uh, definitely look at Black Tree Design. Crusader is also good. They don't have a wide range, but uh, they do have a they do have you know uh, three or four different packs of riflemen plus machine gun teams, officers, mortars, things like that. Um, the Warlord are great because you can find the kits cheap online. You know, you can sometimes find really good deal on those plastic kits. Um, and then they can bulk out your forces. So that's just a little option, little option for you guys. But all of them more or less paint up nicely and I enjoy painting them all. So until next time, guys.